autism is a developmental disability which affects a person's communication. As writer Trisha Van Berkel says, autism is not a puzzle nor a disease. Autism is a challenge, but certainly not a devastating one. But with so many misconceptions about this issue within the community, what is autism and what are some of the ways we as a community can lend support? There's all this and more coming up on today's Women's AM. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu, my dear sisters. You're tuned in to Women's AM. Welcome and jazakallah khair for joining us this morning. We're live, of course, from our London studios with another action packed and exciting show for you. In today's show, we have our roundup on the day's stories of interest in News Bites. We discuss a very important subject in her views so where we'll be taking a look at autism. And in our final segment, we'll be getting inspired by an incredible Muslim in Inspirational Muslims. With so much to get through, let's meet our panel for today. I'm your host, Hassana, and joining me on our lovely Women's AM panel, we have our regular sisters, Zainab and Shahina. Assalamu alaikum, sisters. Wa alaikum salam. How are you both doing today? Alhamdulillah. Good. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Great to see you, sisters. And of course, we have a very special guest today, Sister Shahida Rahman, who is an author. Assalamu alaikum, sister. Wa alaikum salam. It's great to have you here. Alhamdulillah. 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 So sisters, just to kind of kick start the morning, I thought, you know, I'm not going to give you something to try. I'm going to give you something to get those brains working, inshallah. So I've got a bit of a word challenge for you. It's a conundrum. So coming up on that screen shortly, inshallah, is going to be a conundrum. And I'm going to give you about 30 seconds to try and solve it, inshallah. Sister Shaheen is ready. She's there, <laughs> ready for the, for the challenge. Is that right, Sister Shaheen? Can you just bring out the competitive side of me? There we go. <laughs> okay, let's have a look at the conundrum for today, inshallah. She'll be coming up. Right about now, there we go. Okay, so the conundrum on the screen, and you've got to try and unscramble it to create a word. It's a nine-letter word there. And Zainab, sister, you look a little bit puzzled. Are you all right there? <laughs> no? Okay. Sister Shahida, almost there? No, that's a difficult yes. one. Yep, I Sister think Shahida thinks she's got it. All right, yes. we'll pause there then. Sister Shahida, what do you reckon um, it is? If I'm correct, it's adventure. There we go, mashallah. Oh, Alhamdulillah. Oh, I had to come from the also, right? Thank you. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Jazakallah khair, Sister Thank Shahida, you. for that. And I hope our brains are working a little bit better there. So uh, the <laughs> right answer should be coming up on the screen <laughs> right about now. And it was indeed adventure. So mashallah, well done, Sister Shahida, for that. Um, I wonder, did anyone solve it at home as well? So uh, inshallah, if we get some tweets in with the right answer i'll be very pleased to read that later on i'll probably have to come up with some harder conundrums though so uh, let's go to our first oh, segment of the show now it's news bites segment we'll be taking a look at the day's stories of interest and discussing what's been happening around the world and you can call in with your views on the stories we're discussing the number will be appearing on your screen throughout this segment inshallah so sister Zainab what have you got for us this morning from Sky Sports uh, Muslim women group Muslim women's group welcomes FIFA headwear decision so essentially uh, FIFA has decided to officially sanction uh, the wearing of headscarves uh, during matches so uh, a spokeswoman from the uh, Muslim Women's Sports Foundation has, has praised this and said this is a really good first step for sisters and of course alhamdulillah you know wherever there's opportunities opened up for sisters it's a really good thing uh, especially I thought it was very encouraging the um, the foundation um, runs uh, football festivals uh, so that sisters who cover you know alhamdulillah they're able to to to, to engage in sports but in a woman-only environment. So for me, subhanAllah, I just think this is a really good step. Um, if sisters can come out and observe their dean whilst, you know, getting that extra um, sports, uh, sports and uh, activity within them, that's, it's a really good, you know, um, I think what's great about take. this one is that it's not, sometimes we just get so bogged down with, okay, if you've got hijab on, then you can do anything, that's okay. But actually, there's mm. other criteria that you have to take into account. Absolutely. And the great thing about this is it's a women-only environment. Mm. So, uh, so, 
Mashallah. But you know, to be honest, um, on speaking to lots of sisters about this, mm. I found that actually for some um, sisters that are, aren't Muslim as well, they also feel more comfortable mm. in a female-only environment as well. So I guess this is good Absolutely. news for, for, for women in general, not just Absolutely. for, for, for Muslim sisters. You know, it shows that we shouldn't be ashamed of the values that we hold, the fact that we believe in concepts of modesty and, you know, certain ways of dressing and things like that. And we shouldn't want feel the need to, to give that up or to feel embarrassed, you know, that basically go out there, seek those um, opportunities and, and where opportunities be proactive. And there, create them. Great. Absolutely. Absolutely. It also shouldn't be seen as a barrier. Definitely. Yeah. No hijab. I mean, uh, some people, especially non-Muslims, do tend to think that women that wear the hijab it are barred from doing you know certain aspects of things in their life but it shouldn't be seen like that at all articles yeah. like this one are yes. very very encouraging mm. and alhamdulillah mm. and we'd like to hear your thoughts on the stories we're discussing so do call in inshallah the number will be appearing on your screens throughout this segment inshallah sister shahina let's come to you now for the next article inshallah we have um from the telegraph dot uk from the website uh, we have server jessica parker why are today's women so unfriendly and cool and cruel, sorry. Um, I thought this is an interesting one. Um, one of the things that she discusses is she, she doesn't even read um, reviews and comments about herself because actually they can be quite hurtful. And she discusses, you know, once upon a time there was a bit of more of a warmth amongst women. So where's that support gone? Where's that help gone? Where's that? Because we talk about women striving in a society that is male dominated. But w w what we're finding here is actually women are being very critical of women and in a cruel way not in a constructive way but in a cruel way um it just makes me think you know where's the sisterhood as Zena was saying <laughs> earlier to me where's the sisterhood and you know in islam and i use this ayah a lot because this ayah means a lot to me it comes up a lot where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the believers men and women are protecting friends awliya of one another they enjoin the ma maruf and they forbid, forbid the munkar they perform salat and give zakat and obey allah and his messenger but you know the line where it says the believers men and women are protecting friends so even in the sisterhood brother it's an issue, issue but just be uh, women being good to each other we should all be good to each other where one finds something difficult we should be there to support each other not put someone down not drag them down and i read something on the facebook where it says, if you're going to look down on someone only look down on your um, helping them up. You know? Absolutely, definitely. I think that's a really good point. And you know, I love how in, in the ayah that it talks about being a protecting friend, and that's a really interesting concept. The fact that you, not only are you not supposed to harm them, you're supposed to protect them from harm too. So that's definitely something to to bear in mind, inshallah. And and hopefully, you know, we'll, we'll see the sisterhood again, sister, inshallah. inshallah. <laughs> sister Zainab, your next article, inshallah. From the Telegraph, mother of drug death schoolgirl forgives teenager who sold daughter ecstasy. Uh, so essentially, a, a mother from a, a, of a middle-class uh, schoolgirl uh, has come out and says that she forgives this uh, a teenager who, may um, I believe, was probably a friend as well, who sold this uh, ecstasy tablet to her daughter, and her daughter ended up having a, a bad reaction and died. Um, so, alhamdulillah. I think it's inspiring that she's even able to, to think in this way that she would want to forgive this teenager because she still sees them as you know this young person who's still trying to find their, their way in the world. But she also makes uh, the mother also makes a really good point, saying um, warning that the war on drugs in Britain is not working uh, because Martha, the, the, the daughter, uh, was a middle class ch um, girl in no in a North Oxford school, and look what happened to her. You know, sometimes we can view it like that that you know drug problems only affect certain types of people from certain types of community and that's just nonsense you know the, the problems of drugs is affects the the wealthy as much as it affects the you know the poorer elements of society um, and, and we always have those stories that come out about politicians and prime ministers yeah. who took drugs in the past and you don't really expect them to have you go to really elite schools absolutely. so it affects um, everybody absolutely there's one interesting comment from the judge um, saying um, we know we have youth who basically t will, are prepared to take street drugs without knowing the dangers. There's always this debate as to what, you know, where should we go with this? Um, I, I agree with the mother that the, the drug problem is not getting better. It's get, it's, if anything, it's getting worse. Um, subhanallah, um, there are usually there's two different routes: either more education or you know, we should definitely lock them up or lock them up for longer. And it basically shows that neither of these routes are really working. You know, this concept of risk is not something that is see seen as a bad thing. So 
you were making a point earlier yeah, on. Yeah, absolutely. About it was really interesting having this discussion because I was thinking about the fact that in some cases we're actually encouraged to take risks. For example, like um, rides or um, you know uh, going to those kind of amusement parks yeah. or, or whatever else it is, or even things like uh, bungee jumps and skydiving. All of these things, which potentially could be very very dangerous, mm. um, they're actually encouraged to some extent. Yeah. And if you seem to do them, you seem to be kind of brave yeah. enough to go out there and and, and take on the challenge, really. But we, I mean, we don't look at you know making choices or be you know having fun or anything like that as, as a bad thing the issue is is when it comes along with this idea that my whole objective in life is to seek these kind of uh, pleasures and to go and to, to make choices this concept of risk always gets left behind isn't it so even when you when you educate them to a very high level uh, about the, the ills of drugs then of course the issue of risk associated with pleasure is always going to trump that so suppose it's always going to be an issue and even with the you know the, the people who deal with a harder who are more serious levels of uh, deal with more serious levels of addiction? Um, Subhanallah, so there are so many other issues that need to be dealt with, social issues, you know, neurological issues that need to be addressed. But I just think Islam's view on these things is so beautiful that you know our scholars in the past they've kind of um, looked at the the Quran, for example, as, as a whole and looked at what is what it's trying to achieve. Um, and one of the things is the protection of the mind. So anything that will affect that, anything that will degrade the mind is um, like drugs is is, is forbidden. Absolutely. I think it's uh, um, definitely a very, very interesting article. And as you said, you know, there's lots of different nuances in this mm. discussion. And, you know, it's, it's really heartbreaking to see that we've got young victims who are falling casualty to this. So Jazakallah Khair for raising that issue for us today, Sister Zainab. Sister Shahina, um, you've got another article for us, inshallah. Yeah, we've got I have, um, Eden, a sex slave story. And this is from wordpress.com. Um, th this, this article is about a film that is coming out based on a this woman's story who, who was treated as a sex slave for a very long time. And the, this might shock you, but this was in America. Gosh. She's a Korean student who came to America to study and was preyed on by um, this guy um, who dated her for a couple of years and then kidnapped her and took her and sold her off to um, a, a gang who deal with um, the, um, a lot of women. And the thing is, it's really, this is hard to talk about. It's really brutal. And one of the things she said was when she was going through this, she didn't feel like she was in America because, because this was happening in America. Some of these women were dealing with about like 15 clients per day, and this was every day. Um, but my point from this is, what took me back is, you know, this is not new. This has been happening for many, many years. It's just that it's now stories are coming out. And I just, just sometimes I sit there and I think, you know, because in the media you have so many stories about Muslim women being oppressed in the Muslim countries or how Islam oppresses women because they have to wear hijab or this issue or that issue. When you've got stuff like this going on, why is the focus not being on things like this? I mean, with things like hijab, women choose to wear the hijab. They, un they understand this intellectually and they choose to wear it. This is more, uh, more of a discussion when women don't really suffer because of it, whereas you have things like this going on. I mean, I'm not even giving the details because it's actually really brutal. Mm. Uh, it, it is a heartbreaking story mm -hmm. and, you know, uh, kind of just reading through the article, it's, it, it is actually, you know, it kind of just stops you in your tracks, really. Mm -hmm. I mean, Sister Shahida, we, we know that, uh, unfortunately, it is mainly women who are kind of the victims of these kind of uh, crimes, right, aren't they? Right. And uh, unfortunately, it's a reality which is existing across the world, isn't it? That's right. I mean, the, the point is that it can happen to any woman in any country there isn't a particular um, where you can say that it happens in this country alone even in the Western world but I think it's coming out more because women are having the encouragement to come out and Speak about report it yes mm. uh, whereas before they didn't have that Absolutely. Also giving it that kind of coverage. And the, the other really important point I just wanted to add is what the woman said was a lot of the clients were actually people who you think actually are supposed to be protecting us, i.e. the judges, the police, the lawyers. It's absolutely shocking. Yes. And it's definitely, you know, this story, as you mentioned, it's absolutely heartbreaking. Oh, another very, very interesting selection there. Jazakallah khair sisters for that. We are off for a quick break now, but before we do, here's a quick reminder of this week's competition. This week on Women's AM, we are holding an exciting competition for you sisters out there. Up